All right, folks, we're just about ready to begin. All right, folks, hey, welcome in to the broadcast to this first ever session for voiceover group coaching for the class that we're going to have today. Uh, kind of to get everybody up to speed, let me just tell you, these classes are going to start right on time. As you noticed, it is straight up at the top of the hour right now where we're starting, and this is how it's going to be. It is vitally important that you probably get here you know, about five minutes early, all you're going to have to do, as some of you saw, is press the play button and it will start automatically. This is obviously live and I've got to make sure that I'm here pressing all the buttons appropriately. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping so that you know exactly how this is going to work. There is a comment section. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen, there is a comment section. I will be viewing that. Um, from time to time, taking your questions. And so this will be the first time that both of us, all of us will get accustomed to using this particular setup and, you know, getting along, uh, going along with the flow here. Now, also what it is that you want to do is um, scrolling back up to where you can see me uh, talking right now off to the side. Let me see if I can point to it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be pointing in the right direction I may be pointing anyway off to the right side of your screen. You're going to see a download section where you can just go ahead and click, um, click that link and it's going to download directly to your PC laptop or whatever. It is going to be important. I think, uh, that you view these sessions, um, while you're sitting in your, you know, home studio or whatever, uh, or in your living room, whatever kitchen table, but have a laptop, uh, probably have um, a microphone and headset plugged in so that you can get the best experience for this, especially if you're going to be calling in. Now, the thing that you want to make sure that you do is, as I already put in the instructions right below this video, you want to make sure that you are connected with me on Skype, especially for these types of sessions. Well, all of them, because I'm going to be taking your questions live. Uh, if you're connected with me on Skype, then um, basically the experience is going to be a lot better. In particular today, because we're going to be going over script interpretation, I want to take in about one or two people that want to be a guinea pig today. And we're going to go through the scripts provided. Thank you very much by uh, Edge Studio. Uh, basically, you guys can go to Edge Studio and get some practice scripts or whatever. And that's basically what I did. I went and selected two scripts. And one of them I did at an open house um, last month, I think it was towards the beginning of the month or whatever that I had an open house right here and went through some of this same stuff with some of the folks that were actually right here in Earl Hall studio, uh, to do it. And so some of them are probably online right now. So welcome and welcome to all of you. So today, um, and if you want to be a Guinea pig, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. All I need is two. uh, scroll down to the bottom and just put in your name or whatever. But if you're going to be a guinea pig, you've also got to be connected with me on Skype. So you're going to have to open up your Skype. You're going to have to do, this is, this is technology. We're going to, a lot of the things that we're going to be doing, especially in voiceover domination, which all of you are part of, all of you are part of the voiceover domination program. And only in that program, can you get access to this coaching, which is going to be script interpretation, we're going to be going through a lot of different things um, and answering some questions in regards to the best ways to deliver a script. And that's what the focus is for this first Saturday of every month. So if you haven't yet, make sure that you go ahead, open up your Skype and um, all of that. Um, thanks, Stephen. Stephen just said, good morning. Waiting for someone to say that they want to be a guinea pig. And um, I don't know how to spell guinea pig. How do you spell? G U E I. Hey, I want to be a test case. If you can't spell guinea pig, hey, I want to. I want to come on and do uh, some script interpretation with you, Earl, or whatever, and just let me know that you want to do that. But obviously, we've got to be connected on Skype. You can do that right now. All you have to do is open up your Skype and look me up. It's just Earl Hall, all one word. 
all lowercase and it'll say in Milwaukee and it'll have my picture, probably a pic, uh, picture of me sitting in my studio. Um, so you'll be able to know that I'm the right Earl Hall that you are connecting with. All right. So to start off, uh, what I want to do here is, and let me just check, check a couple of more things here with that. Okay. We've got, we've got a good amount of people on already. So we are ready to go and I don't wait. I don't wait for, you know, I don't try and do some sort of intro or whatever. I go right into the material. Now, today we're going to be talking about script interpretation and in the download that's available there, you can see um, the scripts. And also, if you scroll up a bit from the video, you can see the scripts there as well. But I wanted to give you something that you could actually physically download, print out or whatever uh, so that you can practice with. And again, you can go to Edge Studio just like I did. They've got a ton of practice scripts and you can just practice. And so we're going to go through some things that you really need to get a firm understanding of and a hold of in regards to this thing called voiceover and doing the type of script reading that is going to be able to, to get you these jobs. All right. And let me just uh, do another refresh of my screen here. Nobody's saying they want to be a guinea pig as of yet. And if that's the case, if we don't have um, someone to practice, and I believe that you need to, um, this is going to be a good experience in order for you to get comfortable uh, being in a booth, being judged, uh, being given, uh, what do they call it? Now I'm losing words here. Direction on a script. Some people have uh, been in my studio. They know what it's like for me to coach them through a read and to go through. One of the main things that you're going to want to make sure that you lose when you get into the script is your ego. When you get into the studio, you have to lose your ego. If you've got a fragile ego, your feelings will be hurt every time you go in. Let me just tell you that because you're not going to walk into someone's studio doing some sort of read and nail it the first time. You may think you can nail it the first time when you're self-directing and putting out your stuff. But when you're in someone else's booth or if you're being directed live, it can get brutal. I'm going to be completely honest with you there. It can get brutal. So with that being said, if you go in there with an ego and you go in there thinking that you're the cat's meow and that you can just drop a line real quick, let me just tell you, you can't. I can't. I don't know anyone that has. Um, the thing about that, when you go into a booth or you're being self-directed through like Source Connect or something like that from a client, that client or that engineer that's recording you has an I has a has a sound, has an emotion, has his own interpretation of, of how they want this to sound. And that is what they are going to pull out of you or attempt to pull out of you. So when you go into a booth, it, it just does not make any sense to go in there with ego. All it does is make sense for you to go in there with an open mind and to say, you know what? I am here to perform what it is that you need performed and get this clear. It's voice acting. I don't care what kind of script you're doing, especially if you're in someone else's booth. Again, they have an idea of what they want this to sound like. You have to perform to that standard, to that level. And if you're in someone else's booth or if someone has selected you, it's because they've heard something, whether it's in your demo or something else that you've done, and they believe that you can do what they want you to do. So when you go into someone else's booth, lose the ego because you will get your feelings hurt and know that this is the norm. Know that this is the norm. Okay. So we're going to get into this in a few minutes. Still need someone to say, Hey, I want to volunteer to, um, to come on Earl and have you direct me through a read of one of these scripts, uh, because this is going to be important. Someone needs to do this. This is not even an option. We need someone to do this because if it's only me sitting here, you're not learning. Be you've got to see what this is like. You've got to taste what this is like in order for you to become perfected. If you're scared, that's the best thing to be because you'll get over it. You will get over it. Now I'm not the worst, you know, uh, coach, in the world. I've directed plenty of people through reads right here in studio over source connect. I've directed people through creating demos. I'm not the worst guy in the world to work with. Um, but I am real 
And I want you to get a real world experience in regards to how this is going to go down when you start getting into that professional arena and getting some big time jobs, getting some uh, regional and national spots. I want to give you a taste of what that is going to feel like and taste like. All right. So who wants to go here? Who wants to be the guinea pig on this first go around? Still, nobody's trying to volunteer, right? Nobody's trying to volunteer. All right. What I'm going to do, if no one's going to volunteer, I don't think that you're going to get the best experience with this. And again, if you're scared, that's exactly okay. And if you think you got it, and if you think you can do it, or you just want the experience of what this is going to be like, this is for you. So I'm going to sit here for a minute. Let me do a refresh because I know there's a time delay in regards to what I say and what it is that you guys um, hear. So just put in the comments below if, hey, Earl, I want to do it. Make sure that we're connected on Skype. Um, and as I've said before, before we even got to this stage in regards to um, doing this whole type of training, I've talked about the technology. I've talked about the ability to use technology in an appropriate way. This is going to help you in more ways than one going through this process, because if you've never done something like a live directed session, which is going to be huge, it's going to get bigger and bigger and more and more as we go into the future. You can do, um, for instance, I last uh, Friday of last week, I had a live directed session where I was directed by the client and all I did, we used Skype. That's exactly what we used. Uh, let's see. Um, Steve is saying, pick someone that needs help, Earl. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. This is an experience that I just want people either to participate in or to see this, this group coaching that we do, there's going to be a lot of interactivity. And if you don't interact, I'm telling you right now, the people that interact are going to be the ones that get the most out of this program. You're paying good money to be a part of this. And if you're not willing to participate, it also tells me something. I'm just being completely honest. Um, I'm going to be doing a webinar probably uh, the Tuesday after this coming. And it's, it's going to be a pretty hard hitting webinar. Um, and I won't even go into that because that's not what this is about. But whoever it is that wants to do this, let's pick someone and let's go. And what I will do is when you look at the script, <clears throat> In interpreting the script, there's a couple of things that you need to be cognizant of and need to be aware of. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. I just need to do a refresh here. Anthony's asking if I'm seeing comments. Yeah, I see your comments. I, I see everyone's comments uh, that are coming in, but no one's volunteered yet, which, hey. I don't think you're going to get a lot out of this if you're not willing to participate. This is where the rubber meets the road. When I say, and I've made a stated goal, that I want to help 100 voice actors become uh, self-sufficient, independent, completely dependent on voiceover in 2018, I know the ones that participate, the ones that go the extra mile, those are the ones that are going to make it. I'm just being honest. I'm being real. And I think, uh, well, I don't think, I know it has to be this way. Um, I'm not going to hold anyone's hand. I can't. If you want to do this, you've got to do it. And I'm going to give you the tools to hopefully help you accomplish that. So now, when you're looking to interpret a script, there's a couple of things that you need to be very cognizant of. Who is your audience? I mean, who is it that you're talking to? You can't just go into reading a script and just read it and think you're just going to knock it out of the park. You've got to take a look at that script and you've got to understand some certain key points. Who is your audience? And this is all, you know, right below the video here. All this information I'm going to give you, it's, it's in bullet points uh, right below the video. Who is your audience? Who is it that you're talking to? Because that's important. It's important for you to know who you're talking to because it's going to set a tone for your delivery. It's going to be the first thing that you start setting a tone with your delivery. After that, you want to make sure that you understand, okay, what's the age range here? That goes along with who's the audience. All right, who's the age range? You know, if I'm 
I don't know, if I'm selling uh, Jordans, there's going to be an age range. If I'm selling, you know, uh, a CD, there's going to be an age range. There's there's going to be gender that's involved in that. You know, it, am I speaking to male or female? Is this ad directed to male or female? And the more we go uh, into the future and we see how marketing is going. Marketing has become very, very laser focused. And you can see this in your own Facebook feed. The information or the ads that you see in your Facebook feed are completely different from everyone else's uh, in, in most cases. Like my wife's Facebook feed, I don't see that crap she sees in there and she doesn't see mine. It's, you know, as far as the ads go, because of the way that people are trying to laser focus in, they're targeting to sell their stuff. So when they hire us as voice actors, what they want is someone that can hit that market. <clears throat> Excuse me. The thing about marketing is, and I teach this on the marketing side of, of voiceover domination as well. Marketing is to an avatar. It's not to a group. It's not to a group. It's to an avatar, an example or representation of one person that you want to sell to. If it's female, Hispanic, makes a hundred grand a year, has two kids, is divorced. I'm serious. Marketing and on Facebook, you can do all of this. It gets that laser focused. So when you're trying to figure out who your audience is, who your age range is, you know, what are their likes, their dislikes, who, um, who is this person? And you don't think of it as a group. You think of it as a person. And that's how marketers are going, are going today. Now, where is this ad going to be heard? Is it an internet delivery? Is it radio? Is it television? That may tweak how it is you do a thing or two in regards to the delivery of reading your script. You know, what's the tone of it? What is this supposed to feel like? What kind of emotion is this supposed to bring behind my read? You know, what, what has to come out of this as far as the emotion goes? That's where, and this is why not everybody can do voice acting. This is why. Hey, Tanya, I see your comment there. Glad to have you in. Tanya has experienced being in my booth. Tanya is um, here in Wisconsin. And I think it was a couple of weeks ago, Tanya was in here and um, went through some, some script reading and she saw kind of how I do it with that. So glad to have you in the house, Tanya. All right. Uh, let me do another quick refresh here. So the tone how is it that you need to deliver the script in order to make it happen? All right. So we've got, uh, let's see. Uh, we've got Anthony here. Let's try and see if we can't bring Anthony in uh, with a call. And we will bring him in here. You don't have to use your, your video. Just voice is fine for this. All right, Anthony, I think we got you in here. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, just make sure that you do turn your volume down on the stream. Uh, you don't have to turn it off. Just click the mute button or whatever. And just, um, maybe tell folks a little bit about you. How did you come to be involved with steps to voiceover success? That's okay. You got the kids there. That's all right. Awesome. Okay. I'm wondering if everyone hearing Anthony. Uh, someone can tell me in the comments if you're actually hearing Anthony. I want to make sure that we've got this all set up appropriate. So if you are hearing Anthony or if you're not hearing Anthony, just go ahead and give me a quick comment in the comments there uh, to let me know that you guys can, can hear Anthony appropriately. If not, then I'm going to have to do something else. Uh, okay. Everybody can. Okay. So Steve's saying, oh, we can't hear him. Okay. Let's do some, let's do a change of a setting. Anthony, give me a one, two, three, just one, two, three. 
One, two, three. One more time. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Is everyone hearing Anthony saying one, two, three? And if so, just let me know that. And I want to make sure that we can, uh, uh, everybody can hear Anthony. Just yes or no. Can you hear Anthony? Everybody said they can't hear him. Now I need to see it again. Can you hear him now? Did you hear him say one, two, three? And I'm just waiting for a couple screens to refresh. Um, Anthony, I know there's a time delay with that. And all right, we're going to get this here. Let me do one more thing. And if you start to hear Anthony, just go ahead and put in the comments that you can. Um, there's one setting that I've got to change here to make sure. Uh, and Anthony, give me another one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, cool. One. I'm going to change the setting. Now I'm going to wait a few seconds here. I want to make sure that everyone can hear Anthony. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So now they're hearing you. <laughs> okay. Everybody's hearing you. It was just a setting I needed to change in my stream here uh, for that, which is cool. All right. So I'm sorry. You're going to have to repeat that, Anthony. How did you become involved with um, Steps to Voice Over Success? Um, what was that leap for you like? Yeah. So, um, I had been uh, actually acting and coaching and directing for a long time, but I'd never got into the voiceover business. And basically back in April, I was uh, looking for a way to get into the uh, acting industry. Um, and um, mm -hmm. I literally went on YouTube and I found a video from Earl that I think he literally just started posting. And okay. um, I found that video. It was on ACX and uh, I went and, uh, once I got that, I literally started watching all the videos and kind of led me here. I've been hooked ever since. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you. And I've been hooked on you because you've done some amazing things already that you've um, shared and posted in the group. And thank, thank you, you, by the way, for being the guinea pig for this. Um, I know yeah. some people are kind of intimidated and maybe sometimes people just don't have the technology yet. I mean, I even had a foobar there with the technology. So I had to make sure everything was set up appropriately. So sometimes it's just, you know, people well, are. Kind Bear with me. I'll do my. I'll do my best. <laughs> all right. Do you do you have the uh, the scripts in front of you, or did, were you able to yes. print them out, or can you see them, or whatever? Yes, I got them. I have them. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me go through the rest of. It's just a couple of more things here. Uh, said the tone and the feel, and what are the pain points of the audience? You know, and these are the literal things that you've got to th be thinking about before you read the script. Before you read the script, the first thing that you want to do is what I call just a dry read. Just read it. There's no acting involved. You're reading it just to see what it says. Anthony, you want to pick one. Which one would you like to go through? Uh, I'll just do the first one. I'll do 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. Okay. Just, just read it aloud um, just to get a feel for, for what it says. You don't have to do any acting involved. Just kind of see what it says to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's 2 in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge and nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have a dog biscuits hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fires you started the last time you tried using the stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Okay. All right. So we did the read here. Now, taking a look at this, let's go through some interpretation of what this is actually saying. All right. This is 7-Eleven. Look at some of the key points that it's saying in the ad. Okay, it's it's 2 in the morning. All right, mm. who the hell is up at 2 in the morning? You know what I'm saying? Who the hell is up at 2 in the morning looking for something to eat? Who's <laughs> that person? Tired parents. The kids won't go to bed. Could be one. <laughs> that could be one. It could be... Uh, workers. The guy or gal just came in drunk from the club. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, or late, you know, had a late date uh, coming in late from the office. This is one of the things that the person, uh, the client, they're going to give you this information. They're going to tell you who that audience is. Is it the drunk guy or gal coming from the club? Is it the parent that's staying awake because the kids won't let them go to sleep? Is it the guy that got off late or just came in from the airport, flying in from Hong Kong and just getting back home? And it's two in the morning. He went home and or she went home and there's nothing in the fridge to eat. 
you've got to decide or you've got to make sure and, and get a clear understanding of who this is. All right. You see, this guy's got a dog, apparently, or maybe he's just making fun. Not even dog biscuits hanging around. Okay, you you think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fire. So this is a guy. This is obviously a guy. You know how commercials make fun of men all the time. They, they make fun of how stupid we are and we can't do anything. Looking at this script, this is telling me it's a man. Now I've got to see, okay, is this man married? Is there anything in the script that would indicate that to me? Looking at the script, I'm, I'm looking through here. There's nothing that pops out. It seems like this is probably a single guy. It seems mm -hmm. like this is this script is to a single guy. May or may not have a dog. I don't even think that's relevant. But this is a single guy. He doesn't know how to cook. So maybe he's, you know, maybe he's in his, you know, early 30s, late 20s, something around that arena. So there's a certain type of character that goes along with that. Now I'm operating as your client right now. So I'm, I've got to tell you who this is. If okay. this was something that you were re if this was something that you were auditioning for, or that you were doing a read for that client would tell you or, or the, the instructions would tell you, or these would be questions. And this is important when you get a script from someone You've got to you've got to ask these questions because so many times people are not just going to come out and tell you they think, oh, he's a voice actor. She's a voice actor. She's or he's going to know how to do it. It's important to get specifics when you get a script, especially for an audition, because that person that's hearing this audition, that's hearing your voiceover, they've got a voice in their head. Like I said already, they've got a voice. Believe me. They've got a voice in their head. You've got to pull out of them what that voice sounds like. So the people that are out here doing, you know, audition after audition after audition on like voices.com or voices one, two, three, and have no clue about these questions and have a hard time getting the information from whoever to get this audition done. It's one of the reasons why people don't get a lot of work because they don't really you can't, if you can't get in the head of that person that wants that audition, it just makes it that much harder. That's why I prefer email marketing. But <laughs> at any rate, that we'll be talking about that at some point. So as the, as your client and as a director for this read, this is what I want you to imagine. This is a guy, he's 27 years old. Uh, he's been out on a date late uh, with some of the guys. They probably went drinking. Um, he's not drunk. But he's hungry uh, because guys have a tendency not to eat. They just drink. So they're at the they're at the pub. They're at the bar or whatever. They're just drinking. So this is a 27 something, you know, year old guy. And he wants to get something to eat like right now with that. And so with that in mind. You've got to add a little personality to this. Okay. Because so many times what happens is, especially with voice actors, they have a tendency to do the same type of read every time. When you listen to people's demos, when I listen to people's demos, I hear the same read over and over and over. There's no differentiality in, in a read. I hear so many demos that everyone just sounds the same in every single read. And it's irritating. So <laughs> so with this, when and Anthony, have you ever been in any, in anyone's booth being directed? No. Okay, let me tell you what to expect. You're going to see what to expect. But there will be times where you're reading and someone will say, oh, nope, stop, let's do that line over again. They'll interrupt you right in the middle of your read because they know you're not doing it right. And they'll say it over because they're trying to make you sound like the voice in their head. Okay. Okay? All okay. right, so everybody get ready. This is how it goes down. Um, Tanya can tell you, Tanya was in the booth with Earl Hall <laughs> just a few weeks ago. Um, going through some of this and kind of experienced it um, in living color, um, as we say. Uh, yeah, Steve's making some smart comments, some dope smokers. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Anthony, let's um, take a stab at it. I'll let you do your best shot. I'm not going to interrupt you through this first read. I just okay. want to get a base of what your interpretation of this script is. Okay. Go for it. All right. <laughs> So it's two in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge, nothing in the cupboards. 
you don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fires you started the last time you tried using the stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Okay, Anthony, that was actually really good. Cool. That was a really good read. I'd, I was wondering, I was hoping I gave you information that you needed to kind of give you a tone, and you've got the tone. Well, you, yeah, um, actually, the you did, because that was, um, I, no I kind of raised my voice a little bit, was a little quicker, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wasn't more like a neighbor, more like a guy trying to, exactly. you know. So, yeah, so no, that was actually wonderful coaching. Okay, and so doing the read, it's like with that, you even had you even had a little attitude just talking j just from the beginning. So it's two in the morning and you're starving. You you actually went there, which I'm so happy that you did. And so many times people are scared to be silly or get out of their <laughs> comfort zone or just do something. And if anyone is, I know no one has really seen me in the booth, but I'm an animated guy. I, my hands are moving, my body's moving. Um, and when you do a read, you should always be standing. Um, I think whatever it is that you do, I don't think you should be sitting. I think for everything from an audition, especially to a real performance, uh, if you're in someone's booth, standing gives you an extra oomph to what it is that you're doing. I've never seen anyone professionally sit. The only reason I think that you might want to sit is if you're doing a read that that may want to cause you to be somber, uh, that may want to cause you to be a little depressed. Um, you may want to go ahead and sit down, but if you're doing something like this, um, and I know you're probably sitting, uh, yes, Anthony, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you caught me, Sorry. but when you, no, that's okay. But when you do the reads, uh, a read that's going to be a kind of, kind of spunky like this, you kind of want to yeah. get that extra added benefit of being able to to do that. So that was a pretty good read. Give me another give me uh one more read on this here. Just take it whenever you're ready. Okay. Um Sorry, hold on. No problem. So it's two in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge and nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fires you started last time you tried using the stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Awesome. Loved it. Absolutely loved that read on that. I'll tell you what, let's, let's, um, I'm not going to go into the one with the Alamo rent-a-car uh, with you, but everyone can take a look at that and, and kind of go for it. But Anthony, I thank you so much. You did amazing. I loved your thank presentation. You. Loved the way you just brought it. Um, even a little bit of laughter in there about the three alarm fire. <laughs> it's it's those little innuendos. Not personal experience or anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's those little innuendos that can make or break a script. Uh, basically, doing those things like that and adding in that personality or interpreting it in a way like you read that, and obviously it's funny. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. I mean, to me, it's like it's, yeah. it should be funny that you're saying that, you know. So I appreciate that, Anthony. Look, thanks for calling, man, being brave and uh, taking the stab. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Earl. Appreciate <laughs> Take it. Take it easy. All right, guys. So now you see how it is to actually go through. Well, actually, you didn't see how it would be to go through a rough coaching session. You saw basically someone that has a talent and was able to follow direction. And that's. That's really the key, being able to take the direction that is given and performing it to that level. Now, if Anthony was in studio, they would do a couple of takes, probably up to six of the whole script, or they would want to punch up a couple of different lines. Uh, because again, that voice is in the head of the person that is um, of the client, it, that voice that they want to come out is in there. And Anthony met my voice it is, is why I liked it. Some of you may not have liked it, but the client is the one that makes the final determination. The voice that's in that, in that client's head is the voice that they want to come through. And I've been in situations in the booth where I'm in someone else's booth and I'm doing a script 
And I think it's horrible and they love it because that's the voice in their head. It's just not how I saw it. That's another thing when you're in the booth. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. You have you don't offer a suggestion unless it's asked for. You do not say, well, what if we do it this way unless it's asked for? You are the talent. That's it. You're there to perform. You're not there to give your, well, I think it could be better if. Dude. <laughs> Shut up. Follow the direction and I guarantee you, you will be fine. You want to be known as the easiest person in the freaking world to work with. When you're in, when you're in the booth or when you're being directed live, you want to be known as the easiest person in the world to work with. That's it. Now, um, I know when it doesn't look like anyone else is going to step up to the plate, which is okay. Um, we got Anthony in there, which, you know, I wanted to have at least one person while well, I wanted to, but I wanted, to, I'm glad that I got Anthony, um, to do that an outstanding voice actor in his own right. And what we're going to do now is if you've got questions, you can go ahead and post them in the comments. So now's the question and answer period of this whole thing. Um, for you guys, I've got a book there. I spoke with, um, Rodney Salisbury. Some of you may not know who Rodney Salisbury is. Uh, he does a ton of voiceover work on a national scale. Um, if you guys know what Zatarans is, he was the voice of Zatarans. There's, uh, some financial company. I forget that he's, I've seen the commercial. Um, he's, he, it's, it's so much. I can't even go down the list. You can Google Rodney Salisbury and see who this guy is. Uh, he's been in the this arena for decades. Um, and we've been, we've become friends over the past, actually, since I started in voiceover, he was one of the first people that I reached out to, uh, back in the early two thousands, late nineties. And we became friends and he gave me a call last week out of the blue. And we were just talking about some things. He was seeing what I'm doing online and he was like, wow, this is impressive. I want to give you some kudos. I might want to pull your coattail and see how you're doing some of this stuff. And so, I mean, I've got this particular book. If you scroll down under the suggested reading material, the tongue twisters, when you're in vocal warmups, there are things that can help as a voice actor for you to deliver better. There's one thing in particular that I do all the time. You've never seen me do it. This will be the first time you ever see me do this. All right. Um, when I'm getting ready for a script, you know, I want you want to, first of all, Make sure that you're hydrated because like right now, my, my mouth is just dry it, it, because I've been talking a lot and this will happen in the booth. Usually if you go to a studio and it's a good studio, they're going to have water there for you. And they, that's going to be the first thing they give you is a glass or a bottle of water when you come in to do your lines. So um, that can tell you whether they're a good studio or not. If they don't offer you water and it's not even, do you want some water? They give it to you. All right. You want to make sure that you're hydrated. And one of the first things I do when I'm in the booth is this, and it's going to look totally crazy. I'm loosening up my jaw. That's basically it. Then I want to loosen up my lips. So this is what I do. That's what I do to get ready <laughs> to do what I have to do. Rodney Salisbury, this book that I have here under suggested reading, he gives you a lot of different vocal things and tongue twisters that you can do because there are some things that sometimes um, you just get twisted about. I remember, um, who was this? Um, Carlos. Carlos, we did uh, we did Carlos's demo uh, last week. And I don't know if Carlos is, is on. John, Carlos. John, uh, Carlos, if you're in here, let me know. He may or may not be in here. Put something in a comment and let me know that you're there if you are here. Um <clears throat> there was a line and it was for, what was the ad for um, in his demo? I forget, but there was a line and he could not get this line. It was a tongue twister. We had to go over and over and over and over this line. And he finally got it and crushed it and killed it. And the line was to the effect of act like, you know, that you know what you're doing. Act like you know that you know what you're doing. No. Act like you know that you know that you know what you're doing. And it was getting that out for whatever reason was like, it was a tongue twister. 
And we had to get through and break through that barrier of getting the proper delivery for it, uh, for his demo. So this book, um, Tongue Twisters and Vocal Warmups by Rodney Salisbury, is a good place to start when you're looking to get an understanding of, you know, how you can strengthen your voice, uh, how you can, you know, warm it up, what you need to do to protect it. Uh, some tongue twisters that will help you um, in your delivery with this. And so these are certain practices that, you know, some of them I do daily. Some of them I do every once in a while. Um, Rodney claims he does them every day. I don't know. But, <laughs> but when you get into looking at these tongue twisters and being able to perform them, it will make things easier. I can tell you that. Um, so you can click on that image of that book. If you want to get that book, I think you can download it on your Kindle or your phone. You can get it in hardcover or, or paperback. And there's audio also an audio book version of this as well. Anthony, I know you do audio books, but, oh, uh, well, right. I think, right. Yeah. Rodney did his own audio book on this one, <laughs> but he's been around for a while. Rodney's done movie trailers. He's, I mean, big time, not any, he's done, he does big time stuff. I'll just put it to you that way. And when we get into some of the other uh, classes and courses that we'll talk about through voiceover domination, I'm going to talk a little bit about Rodney. Um, I'm probably going to be bringing Rodney in on a call or two um, so that he can be here with you guys as well. Answer some questions, maybe give you some tips and tricks. Um, I haven't asked him yet, but I'm sure if I do, uh, he'll come on. But I'm always respectful. I'm always respectful of people's time in that regard because he is a busy dude. Um, with that. So I'm going to do a little refresh. And today, I hope you got something out of this. Um, again, if you've got some questions, now's the time to go ahead and ask me those questions. The class is basically over um, for today. Uh, and thank you so much again, Anthony, uh, for being that guinea pig and coming in and at least showing people um, what it's like to be directed. Um, Anthony took direction extremely well, and you saw how long it took for me to go through giving the direction. This is what makes your job easy is when you're given direction. So when you're doing your marketing, when you're doing email marketing and things of that nature, when people want you to do auditions, go back through this list that I gave you, the bullet points, you need to understand these things. When you understand these things exactly like Anthony understood it, you're able to deliver a much better read. Those are the key things that you need to ask yourself. Um, this is being recorded. I'm going to put this up here. It should pop up here in a little bit. Uh, you can go back and rewatch this, you know, later today or tomorrow or whatever uh, to get a feel for this. Um, but if you do have any questions now would be the time to go ahead and ask those questions of me. And I just, I'm taking a look here uh, to see at a couple of things that are going on. Okay. All right. Oh, you're more than welcome, Anthony. Um, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Looking at Anthony's comment. Uh, by the way, if, if you don't see the comments that I'm seeing, just all you have to do is refresh your screen. Um, I'm going to disappear for a minute and you're going to have to press play again. But um, any rate. All right. So, what did you, since no one has any questions in the comments, I would love for you to put if this was a valuable lesson for you. Every time that I do a lesson, I'm going to bring it as best that I can. No holds barred. You'll probably start seeing another side of me as well. Um, because this is deeply serious to me. Everything that I'm going to be teaching is deeply serious. I want to give you as much as I can, but just like in the script interpretation that I went through with Anthony and giving him all the information, there is no way that I can give you what you need if I don't know specifically what you want. So in this, in the comments, I would love for you to put what you would like to know more about. And I would like to know if you found this training valuable and what you found, what you found valuable about it. And, um, while you're doing that, you know, I'll hang on. And if you've got particular questions, you can go ahead and ask them. Um, you can come back to this page, obviously at any time, leave questions or comments, and I'll see that as well. You know, with that, this has been, this has been fun for me. Um, but kind of as I'm, I'm waiting and I'm, I'm waiting for folks to put in comments. Uh, if you don't know, um, 
I will be doing a live call-in talk show uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time um, on my YouTube channel. If you're not a, a subscriber to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you become one and make sure that you tick the bell so that you get notified when I go live or when I upload a video. This has come about because people have been asking. There is basically you're going to see me in the same scenario and same setup. Um, there's a lot, there's going to be a live call in number, um, on yesterday, on Friday, I decided to do it starting yesterday to work out the bugs and the kinks. And I'm glad I did. Conchita was there. And so graciously helped me through this, you know, as kind of, uh, um, it was the first time that I did it doing the live call in and everything like that. You know? So if you look at the video that I did yesterday from YouTube, you'll see how I react when trouble happens. You'll see how to react when trouble happens and things aren't going the way that you think they should go and you work through it. And so we got everything nailed down. The last 20 minutes of the show was amazing. Uh, people were calling in, blah, 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 um, asking questions. So it was, it was amazing. Uh, we had calls from overseas here in the States. Um, it was an amazing experience. And it's something that I think is going to be highly valuable to the voiceover community. One, because there's no one doing it. And you know how I love to be the one doing something different from everyone else. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to do the live call-in show. Again, it's going to be Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, live call-in. You can obviously, you know, leave on YouTube as you're there, and I'll see those. But we're going to, uh, I'm going to just try and kill this thing. I, I want to make an impact, and I plan on doing that. All right, so we've got a couple of questions. I see Tanya is asking. Um, we should never touch the mic or the other things, right? Let them adjust if you need something adjusted. Yes, um, that is correct. Let the engineer hand, it's, it's his equipment. It's not yours. You know, you're probably going into studios just like mine that has, you know, the microphone is a thousand dollars or more. Okay. It's not yours. <laughs> let them do it. Um, let them handle it. If, you know, they say, Hey, go ahead and adjust the mic. However it is. Then you do that. But the thing, the, the key thing of going into a booth is, you remember how I said shut up? Is just to take instruction. If you keep that in your head, just to follow instructions, you'll be a step ahead of the game. You'll be a step ahead of the game. Um, outside of the booth or sometimes in the booth, they will have a table or something, you know, they'll, you know, let you obviously take your water in there. They may have a table for you to put your keys. You want to turn your cell phone off, not vibrate off. <laughs> that will piss off an engineer more than anything else. Uh, well, maybe not more than anything, but it's up there uh, with what will piss them off. Turn your cell phone off. Uh, when you go into the booth, um, ladies and gentlemen, jingling earrings is a no, no um, jewelry. Don't wear jewelry. Don't wear a watch. When I go, I, I don't wear a watch. I don't, I mean, I don't wear a watch often. I do have a watch that I wear, but you know, just, I'm married and you see, I don't even have my ring on. I, it's you, you don't go in there with anything that's going to make noise. Go in cold, leave your keys on the table in front of you or that they provide for you or leave it outside with your phone that's turned off. Um, but when you go into the booth, you want nothing that's there to make a noise, no jewelry, no necklaces, no, um, nothing on your wrist at all and follow instructions. So thanks for that question, Tanya. I appreciate that. Um, Anthony saying, so I was nervous about the in-studio type call. I've heard you and others talk about it, but never experienced it and was nervous. I feel like I could offer this now. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Now, let me just tell you, sometimes you've got some, because and this is why I say you should never take it personal and you never should take direction from anyone personal. It's, they don't know you, you don't know them, but they have a job to do and they want to bring something out. Sometimes they will make you go through the roof up and down to bring out what it is that they like or, or what they want. Give you an example there. I just happen to think about this. There's this movie called barbershop with ice cube. And many of you may have seen the movie and you know that um, I can't remember the female rapper, that was in there um, in that particular movie. And she had a, a, a line where someone had drank her apple juice and she had to literally come storming out and say, 
who drank my fucking apple juice or whatever it was. She had to come out and say that. And so I was looking at um, like a behind the scenes thing and they literally on purpose without telling her literally on purpose made her mad. So she would deliver her line. The way that they did it is they cut her off every time she came out and made her go back and start again until she got frustrated as hell. They didn't tell her she was doing, they were doing this. She didn't find out till after the fact, but they wanted to bring something out of her. So she would come out, who drank that? What? Yeah, go back, start again. Who drank my, go back, start again. By the time they got what they wanted, this chick was pissed the freak off. <laughs> so that's what, it's one of the things I'm telling you, don't get, you know, don't get in your ego. Take the direction because they know or ought to know what it is that they're doing. And if there's a certain type of emotion, and if, especially for if something like anger or whatever, they want to bring that out in a real sense. They want you pissed off and they want you delivering that line pissed off. If they want you crying or sounding like you're crying, they may make you cry. They may go there with you. This is acting people. This is not a hobby. This is not something that's cute, whatever. If you're serious about this, it's something that's going to be tough. All right. I hope that made a lot of sense <laughs> with what it is that I just said. All right, um, coming up in uh, the next session that we have on next week, we're going to be talking about your gear. Uh, we're going to be talking about your home studio setup. That's where we're going to start. We're going to go through a process of making sure that your gear is set up appropriately. I know, Anthony, you had some issues with your DBX286S um, and your Personas hookup. Um, so we're going to be talking about your gear, uh, your interfaces, the whole nine yards with that. And there's a lot to learn within this because uh, we're going to get into audio production. There's a lot of things that we're going to to get into um, with this. So thank you guys uh, for being on this first ever um, on Steps to VoiceOverSuccess.com, this live coaching session. And I hope it I hope it helped. And I hope that it uh, is going to make a difference. If you've got questions about anything, you can obviously leave those questions here on the page. But more than that, if you've got questions or whatever, uh, I'm thinking, should you leave it here or I'm thinking you might, I'll tell you what, leave it here or in the group, um, steps to voice over success. I'll figure out what's the best way. Uh, so leave me a comment wherever, whether it's on this particular page that you're watching me on right now, or whether it is, um, in the group, um, the Facebook group steps to voice over success, just, um, Leave your comments anywhere and I will see them. And as the weeks and months go on, I'll know what's the best way uh, to make all of this work best for us. So I hope this is, has been valuable for you. Again, leave me a comment letting me know if this has been valuable for you and what you got out of this particular thing. Your input for me is going to help me teach in the future. Just like I'm telling you that you need input from people that want you to do a script. I need input from you so that I can deliver to you what you want. You've got to give me feedback. You got to, um, because I don't know what you don't know. And I don't know what you want to know. I just know what, you know, if I come up with something, okay, I'm going to teach this today. It may not be anything you're even interested in. Let me know that. All right, guys, thanks a lot uh, for being here and for doing that. Um, go ahead and check out the book uh, from Rodney Salisbury, the tongue twisters and vocal warmups. Go ahead and grab a copy of that. Um, we maybe even go through some of those things in the future in regards to, um, getting your voice ready and warming up. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and do that. All right, guys, this has been fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you. You guys have a great rest of your day on this um, Saturday and um, I'll see you guys on the next live stream or hopefully I'll see you Monday, 10 a.m. Central because you'll be tuned into in the booth with Earl Hall um, on YouTube. All right. So you guys have an amazing weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.